Well, a warm welcome to this video. It's Thursday, the 13th of April. Now, I've had uh, an inordinate amount of requests to look at the information contained in this interview. So let's have a quick look at that now. For content. Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We, have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, wow. COVID misinformation. You changed, the COVID, you changed the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed this COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Has asking you about, you changed the labels, the COVID misinformation labels. There used to be a policy, and then it then disappeared. Why, why do that? Well, COVID is no longer an issue. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government to change its editorial policy? Are you aware of that? This is, a, this is not an interview about the BBC. Oh, so. you thought it wasn't? <laughs> and this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's talk about something else. You want I'm to talk about the BBC? You too. All right, let's, 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 talk about, let's talk about something else. You weren't expecting that. Let's talk about something else. Has the BBC changed its COVID misinformation? I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. Uh, questions there from uh, Elon uh, Musk. Now, uh, let's look at some of the commentary that was been going on about this. This is from one of the uh, leading, most respectable papers in, in the United Kingdom, actually, arguably the most uh, authoritative paper in the United Kingdom. Elon Musk accuses BBC of covering up vaccine side effects. Well, is that putting it a bit strongly? I don't know. I mean, you, you've seen the clip. Uh, you judge for yourself. Was he actually... Uh, accusing the BBC of covering uh, covering up vaccine side effects. Um, full interviews there. Um, check it out. Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, it seems to be still available. The BBC are still making this uh, interview available. Mr Musk again. Does the BBC hold itself at all responsible for misinformation regarding masking and side effects of vaccinations? And not reporting on that at all. That's what Mr. Musk uh, said. Now, um, I must say, watching the larger part of this interview, I'm very, very impressed about how well Mr. Musk is informed about a whole range of a uh, whole range of issues. Uh, re really quite impressive, and I think we can assume he's uh, fairly well informed. I don't really know who that reporter was from the BBC, but I expect his boss has had a word with him for being perhaps not as prepared as he as he could be. More, more on that interview later on. Um, and what about the fact, again, direct quotes, uh, that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government? Now, um, Mr Musk seems to have information that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government. If so, that is rather ominous and would totally undermine, in my view, British democracy. So let's, let's hope that's not true. What were the BBC put under pressure to do, according to Mr Musk? Uh, to change the editorial policy. Are you aware of that? Um, now, obviously, the BBC being uh, presumably lily white and squeaky clean on this would come back and say, no, this is complete rubbish. But uh, as far as the Telegraph article was concerned, uh, the BBC declined to comment on Mr Musk's claims. Why? Why wouldn't they comment on Mr Musk's claims? Why, why on earth not? Mr. Musk previously uh, spoken about having major side effects after the second COVID uh, vaccination. I became aware of my assumed uh, adverse reaction to the vaccine after my uh, third dose. Um, Mr. Musk was aware of his after his uh, second second dose. And uh, he says this um, left him feeling as if he was dying for several days. So I really hope he's made a full recovery. Um, if, if what I consider to be my, my vaccine injury, um, I haven't made a, a full recovery. I need to take blood pressure medications now. And that just started a few months after my third dose. Um, 
temporal correlation, of course, of course, temporal correlation. But many other people seem to have the same temporal correlation, strangely enough. Uh, more on that on another video when we look at that. In a, I'm collecting evidence on that now. Um, so Mr. Musk uh, had uh, unfortunate effects there. The BBC's liberal bubble has finally burst. <laughs> this opinion piece, of course. And we can't... Uh, yeah, it's an opinion piece by Telegraph writer. Huge thanks to Mr. Musk for exposing the corporation's groupthink with such forensic dancing wit. That's just one view. Now, BBC have come back, of course, um, um, with a what you might call a counterpiece. Six things we've learned from uh, Elon Musk interview they, they are talking about. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through these things because it, it felt to me like the... Uh, well, what do I know? I, I only read it. Um, but it looked to me like the BBC was trying to have a go at Mr Musk to justify itself. Might be completely wrong, of course. But it did seem to be rather critical uh, to me. But there again, I'm just a, maybe a bit of a suspicious person. Um, but six things we learned from the interview is what it's called. Now, this is what Mr Musk said. In March, Twitter said it removed 400,000 accounts in one month alone to help uh, make Twitter safer. Now, we believe these are bot accounts because uh, Elon Musk, of course, is very uh, technically savvy. And uh, he, he would probably be able to give the instructions to remove these automatic bot accounts. And, uh, and he says this, uh, my experience, there is less misinformation rather than more on Twitter at the moment. As I say, if you want to see more from the BBC's perspective on that, it's in that article. We always give uh, full links on this channel. Let's listen to a bit more of that interview now, just that you might find it interesting. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, free speech is meaningless unless you allow people uh, you don't like to say things you don't like. Otherwise, it's irrelevant. Um, and if at the point at which you lose uh, free speech, uh, it doesn't come back. I, th I think the issue some people have is that a lot of people were brought back. I mean, some people were brought back who uh, were previously banned for spreading things like uh, QAnon conspiracies. You have people like Andrew Tate who were brought back, who were previously uh, banned for things like hate speech. Do you think you prioritize freedom of, of speech over misinformation and hate speech? Well. You know, who's to say that something is misinformation? Um, who's the arbiter of that? Is it the BBC? And you, you're literally, literally asking me? Yes. Well, no, you, you, are, the, the you are the arbiter on Twitter because you own Twitter. Yes, I'm saying who, who is to say that one person's misinformation is another person's information? Um, at the point at which you, you say that there is, uh, this is misinformation, like, who is you, going you to decide that? you accept that misinformation that? can be dangerous, that it can cause yes. real-world harms, that it can potentially cause... Um, yeah, so the point I'm trying to make is that the BBC itself has, at times, published things that are false. Do you agree that that has occurred? I, 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 I'm quite sure the BBC have uh, said things before that turn out to not be true. Correct. Uh, in, in its, whatever it is, 100-year history, I'm quite sure. Yes. Even if you aspire to be accurate, there are times when it will, you, you will not be. Right, but I, think, that, I think in the but, grand scheme of things, accept, the BBC does, does aspire to be accurate. But you accept there has to be a line in terms of hate speech. I mean, not, you're not looking at total 100% unrestricted speech. Um, there's, well, I mean, I generally of, I'm of the opinion that if, if, uh, if, you, if, if the people of a given country are against a certain type of speech, they should talk to their elected representatives and pass a law to prevent it. So, for example, you, you cannot advocate murdering someone. That's illegal in the United States. Everywhere, really, I, I suspect. Um, so, uh, so there are limits to speech. Um, I mean, I, I guess taking your argument to a logical conclusion then, do you accept that there's more misinformation on the platform if it's not being policed in the same way? I, I actually think there's, there's, there's less these days because we, we've eliminated so many of the bots which were pushing scams and spam. Uh, and previously, previous management turned a blind eye to, to the bots because their bonuses were tied to user growth. And if, you vote, you're, if, you're, if your compensation is tied to user growth, uh, well, you're not going to look too closely at some of the users. That's part of the problem. 
So I think we've got less misinformation because we've, we don't have the bot problem that we used to do. Um, and we also have um, given a lot of attention to community notes, uh, which corrects, uh, with community itself, corrects misinformation. Uh, it's been very effective. Um, I, I mean, yeah. I, would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, what hate that you speech are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, but just a personal anecdote. Like, what do you? Do? I don't. P personally, my uh, for you, I would see. I get. I get more of that kind of content. Yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to talk to the rest of for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content moment. you don't like or or hateful. What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit. A reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist. Those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, n no, is I'm that not, what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and if and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me. You've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's what I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't use, I, I, honestly, you I don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore, because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you actually, said a lot of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, 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 only, well, I only look well, at hang my, on a my second. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I, then I how did you see the hateful content? content? Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right, and you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, I, and, I, and I'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con of content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed, you just lied. What no no what I claim was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on my feed or not, I mean, I, right? And Literally if you, you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, U in the UK, they will say that. So you, they, look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right. And as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? That I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content. And then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, wow. COVID misinformation. You Amazing. The COVID, you've changed the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed its COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Has asking you about, you changed the labels, the COVID misinformation labels. There used to be a policy, and then it then disappeared. Why, why do that? Well, COVID is no longer an issue. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government to change its editorial policy? Are you aware of that? This is, a, this is not an interview about the BBC. Oh, so. you thought it wasn't? <laughs> and this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's talk about something else. If you want I'm to talk about the BBC. You too. All right, let's, 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 talk about, let's talk about something else. Sorry about the duplication of part of that content there. I found myself rather enthralled with the, uh, with the discussion, as I'm sure you did. The reason I put that bit in is there's been so much problem with misinformation and disinformation.
and do try and catch that uh, video I've uh, just released yesterday, or in fact, was it today, with, with Dr. Sunil Dand, where we both had pressure from uh, outside agencies, and indeed, um, um, well, personally, I've had quite extreme uh, threats. Um, so this, 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 is, this is a problem. This is a problem. But um, all, all I can say is I try and give the information um, as accurately as I can based on the evidence that, that, uh, that I see and um, don't always get it completely right. Same as uh, Dr. Dand. Uh, he's open to uh, counter-argument as, as well as I am. But um, it is a problem and um, let's hope there's been no national collusion uh, in the United Kingdom or the United States. Or anywhere really. Um, we'll leave that there as a point of reflection. Thank you for watching.